Hey guys, I'm just doing a quick video on oil change business, how I see it. Um, this is going to double as our state of the oil change union bi-weekly video that we do for our franchisees because this video is going to largely center around the uh, 2022 franchise disclosure document for Jiffy Lube. Uh, I, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the macro trends that are going on in the industry. And, uh, and we're going to start off with this page right here on page 83 of the, the Jiffy Lube franchise disclosure document, which shows the amount of franchise agreements that were signed. Uh, and, and that number is at 42. And uh, we just want to take a quick victory lap because Jiffy Lube is synonymous with the oil change industry. They were the ones that scaled it. They were the ones that did the consolidation and uh, scooped up Q Lube and Minute Lube and all these other brands that allowed for this industry to have scale and not be so fragmented. And so I have a lot of respect for Jiffy Lube and uh, appreciate what they paved for us. And, uh, and, and I know I talk at length about how I think multi-care is a bad idea and how I think it's not the right direction for the industry. And Jiffy Lube has such influence on the independents that, you know, what way they go, usually the independents go and it's at odds with our, uh, our model. But we sold 75 territories in the past 12 months. And so, you know, again, I want to take a short victory lap because I have so much respect for Jiffy Lube that I think that this just speaks to the model that we're trying to sell uh, from a consumer level, from an operator level, uh, that we were able to sell more franchises than the largest quick loop franchise in the entire country just speaks volumes about um, you know, our model and what we're trying to achieve. And so um, yeah, again, just the short victory lap. Um, before I go into the next part though, I do wanna give a quick shout out to Stonebriar Automotive because uh, they're facing, you know, we're all facing the same supply chain issues, real estate issues, interest rate issues, lumber issues. And uh, that team, that real estate team over at Stonebriar has been pounding these buildings out and they're not easy buildings to get approvals. They're not easy buildings to build. And, and while they have deeper pockets and they have more funding and they have more established brand recognition, they uh, are getting it done. And at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters is getting these facilities opened. Um, and so, I just wanted to give them a quick shout out because I do think that they are the best in the industry of what they do in terms of getting these buildings built. Um, I'm going to slide up on this because there's another change in the Jiffy Lube FDD that is interesting to me. Um, this is the corporate locations. And I have talked at length, if anyone's ever talked to me about the industry or been on some of the founders calls, talking about, I've talked about the shell acquisition of Pennzoil with the Pennzoil acquisition of uh, Jiffy Lube, et cetera, and, and how that ultimately led to there being no corporate owned franchises. But it appears as though uh, the last time there was zero corporate owned franchises was 2019. And in the past year, they've increased the number of corporate owned stores. Um, I don't know what this means. I don't know if Jiffy Lube is doing something here. I know that uh, it looks like a bunch of the outlets were acquired from franchisees. Um, and I don't, th you know, I had previously thought that not, uh, non-renewals were going to be a big factor in, in Jiffy Lube's future because we're coming up on essentially the second renewal of some of the original franchisees. If they're doing 20 year, uh, franchise renewals, you've got 1980 to 2000 and then 2000 to 2020, uh, to 2020. So we're coming up on a bunch of the original franchise, uh, owners, second renewals if they're doing 20 year contracts. Um, but in any case, back to this point, you know, at the beginning of the year, although some of these are corporate owned that were acquired for franchises, some of them are actually just corporate owned stores that were open. And that's interesting to me uh, because they had gone a while without having any corporate owned stores. And um, I don't know what the, what the internal dialogue at Jiffy Lube and Shell is about that and why that change happened, but it sure is interesting to me. Um, one of the, the next thing I'm going to scroll up, we have a lot of, uh, the, a lot of terminations. So I think that you're probably finding this, this could be a, uh, an issue of, you know, protecting the shield. And when I say the shield, that the Pennzoil logo, um, you know, in the past, we've seen Jiffy Lubes using Pennzoil, uh, intellectual property without actually selling Pennzoil products. That's been a sticking point. Um, but also it could just be those who are hesitant to get into this multi-care uh, situation where they're all of a sudden having to do services that they didn't sign up for. I, I think, you know, again, going back to the success that we're having as a franchise, 
you know, we've created a building and we've created a model that allows for oil change only, which is at the end of the day, one, what I think the consumer wants and two, what I think the operator wants. And so um, the one number that does shock me is non-renewals. And so that just tells me that the franchisees are pretty happy with what they're doing. It's a little bit surprising to me. Um, and it only goes back to 2019. So um, I, I'll go back through prior FDDs to take a look, but um, it, in any sense, you know, uh, the, the Jiffy Lou model uh, is changing as electric vehicles penetrate the market, it'll continue to change. Um, and so that is an important part of their model. So right here um, is where Jiffy Lube starts talking, has a, has a little annotation about the 2014 uh, change where they started offering breaks and other higher ticket item services and uh, their four bay facilities, et cetera, et cetera. And um, they do a good job of breaking it down for stores that were open less than a year, less than two years, less than three years, et cetera, and showing, you know, what the high is, the low is, the median. And, um, you know, for us, we've always said that the top line revenue is not a great indicator, right? Because if you sell tires for $150, but your cost is $100 and you have higher expense on your labor, then you're really not making that margin that you would on a $70 full synthetic oil change if your cost is $10 for your COGS and, and then the labor. And so top line revenue doesn't always translate to the higher margin, but when you're uh, in a place where you need to get royalty revenue, when you have no corporate owned stores, and, I, and as I talked about earlier, there's a change in that. Obviously there's some corporate stores now, so they'll generate profit and uh, make money that way. But uh, back in 2019, when there was zero owned uh, corporate stores, the only way that, Shell would make money from Jiffy Lube is through the royalties. And how do you increase the amount of royalty? Well, increase the top line revenue. It doesn't matter if the operator ends up making any money, but that's, you know, that is how you increase revenue from uh, the parent company standpoint. Um, I did a tweet earlier today, just kind of in jest, by the way, I'm going to scroll all the way up here and I'm going to read through this because it's a little bit of a tongue twister, but it's funny just the way that some of these businesses are structured because uh, you know, we, we have a much simpler structure. Obviously, we're not a uh, one of the largest oil companies in the world, but uh, Jiffy Lube is a wholly owned subsidiary of Pennzoil Quaker State Company doing business as Sopus Products, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Shell USA, known as Shell Oil Company, formerly known as Shell Oil Company, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Shell Petroleum Inc. Shell Petroleum Inc. is a wholly owned subsidiary of Shell Petroleum NV and Shell Envy is a wholly owned company uh, owned by Shell PLC, formerly known as Royal Dutch Shell, which is a Dutch corporation. So um, it's just interesting when things get up the, the ladder of size and complexity, the structure choices. But um, that's, I mean, that's really it for this video. I want to talk about that 2022 FTD. I'm going to go through some of the other brands, FTDs, probably not make videos on them. Jiffy Lube is easy, you know, it's publicly out there. It's a little bit easier um, and uh, to, to get that information because they're publicly traded. Same with Valvoline. We'll probably go through Valvoline, but um, as far as some of the other franchises in the space, probably not going to do videos on them. Um, I'll review the information for internally for our franchisees' uh, sake and future franchisees, but in terms of putting videos out there, I don't think it would be appropriate. Maybe take five. They're getting pretty big these days, but um, anyone wants my opinion on things, you know, <laughs> you always come ask me. We, we have our founders call every single week, and I'm pretty open about it. Um, so I want to thank everybody for watching this video, and have a great week.